prepared for battle. Prepared for battle. And um, I want to kind of deal a little more uh, with where we were last week. We were kind of taking a little further than where we took it last week. We were in the book of Ephesians. Uh, so those that, that have Bibles, which we believe everyone does at Bible study, uh, Ephesians chapter number 6 uh, is where we'll be tonight. Ephesians chapter 6, we had dealt with uh, verses 10 through 17 last week. My intent was to get from 10 to 19, but time ran out on me. So I'm going to pick up with 18 and 19 tonight, and then we're going to go into some more biblical teaching as it relates to being prepared for battle. Uh, you guys know how I like to do it. So in terms of a recap uh, for Deaconess Black that was out of town last week and, and for our two guests that we have, David and Gail, they want to make sure that Pastor Hinton wasn't just up here wasting everybody's time last week. They want to make sure that this guy they're listening to tonight uh, gave you something good last week. So anybody, uh, give us a little portion, first lady, of what it is that we dealt with on last week. Um, one of the first things we talked about is that our battle is never physical. Mm, it's our, always spiritual. Our battle is never physical. It is always spiritual. Do y'all be honest? Um, Praying without ceasing. How does one pray without ceasing, Harrison? Without stopping. Without stopping. Does that mean every moment of my life, with every uh, yeah. second of my being, I'm always praying? What does that mean? It means that you pray without, it means you pray without. The Aviana will help you? Turning away. Without turning away. Yes. Our life is always in a posture yes. that there is a continual prayer. Uh, we gave the example of how it is that one has an, um, you know, an inherent or a continual intermittent cough. Mm -hmm. uh, the cough is continuous. My wife has just, God has really blessed her, amen, so much so. Uh, but the past week, she had a serious coughing issue. Uh, and uh, she was continually coughing. Uh, it wasn't that every second she was coughing, but it was always an urge for her to cough. And that's the same way the scripture says, pray without ceasing. That's exactly what Paul is saying. There ought to always be the urge for us to pray. Mm -hmm. It should always be the push for us to pray. Our life should never be turned away from prayer. Okay? So we talked about our battle not being physical, but always being spiritual. That's a great point that we're going to uh, continue to expand on tonight. We talked about praying without ceasing. What are some of the other things? Minister Black. Yeah, we also talked about putting on the whole armor of God. That's where we were. We're yes, putting sir. on the whole armor of God. And we broke down these various pieces of the armor as it relates to the word of God. So in terms of recapping purposes, the first thing that he said we ought to do is to have our loins girt about with truth. Somebody help me. What does that mean to have my loins girt about with truth for those that were here last week? God's word should be at the center of of your being. Oh God, I love it when people talk without, that's what I'm talking about right there, Sister Lipscomb. I, God's <laughs> word ought to be the center of our being. My loins, my waistline is the very center belt. of my body. Yes, yeah, sir. yeah, yeah. My, my belt. It's what holds me up. Yes, sir. And for my loins to be girded about with truth simply means God's word is to be the very center of my being. It is the very thing that holds me up. Every answer that I need for every situation in my life is contained in God's word. His word is designed to hold me up. My loins girt about with truth. All right. Uh, we said we have on from there the breastplate of righteousness. Somebody help me. Uh, Sister Foster is frantically scrambling for notes back then. <laughs> my notebook fell apart. Okay. You, you get, you're, getting it, you're getting it together. Minister Black Singer, I saw your hand. Yeah. Uh. He's always available for healing. Mm. Uh, That's good. Continual level. A continual level of healing. A breastplate. The breastplate is designed to cover my heart. Protect. That's right. It protects my heart. The breastplate is covering my heart. The word of the Lord, we gave this in, in, uh, in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It says to keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. And so my breastplate of righteousness, oh, this is like, we got kind of graphic last week. I'm surprised nobody dealt with that. Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, 
we, whose righteousness do we want to have? God. We want God's Only. righteousness. Yes, because what is our righteousness like? Like filthy, filthy rags. rags. And what's a filthy rag? A menstrual. A used, used menstrual, menstrual pad. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, that's heavy. Yeah, yeah, that's what our righteousness is. That's Bible. I'm just giving you the word. Isaiah 64 and 6 is in there. My righteousness is as filthy rags. That filthy rag is a used, okay, we'll, we'll stay from there. So um, that's <laughs> what our righteousness is. So we're supposed to put on God's righteousness. God's righteousness is always pure. His righteousness uh, means that he declared us to be upright. Uh, when, when, when I live according to my own righteousness, the Bible says this in uh, Judges chapter 21, uh, verse number 25. Uh, he says that, you know, uh, there was no king in Israel. And every man did that which was right in his own eyes. That's right. So, so when I'm operating according to my own righteousness, my own righteousness, that means I'm living life the way I feel like it should be lived. And nobody can tell me whether I'm right or wrong because I'm living to my own standard. One of the things is this. One of the things you'll learn about Pastor Hinton is this. Um, everybody has an opinion, all right? Mm -hmm. Because we're humans, everybody has an opinion, everybody has a view. But there's only one thing that's been proven over the eons of time, and that's the word of the Lord. Yes, sir. So God's word is always what we are to be measured to, okay? We always have to come up to this. Doesn't matter how good I am, doesn't matter how good I look, no matter how good I act, no matter how good I talk, my righteousness still is as filthy rags. It is the perfect righteousness of God. This perfect law of liberty that we look into, that we ought to be able to see God's righteousness and not our own. All right? Uh, after that, our feet being shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Somebody help me, please. That our feet is always, they're always prepared to tell someone about the good news. Always of Jesus positioned to go witness about Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. What does the Bible say about the feet of those that preach the gospel of peace? They are blessed. Yes, they are. <laughs> they are blessed, and the scripture declares that they are beautiful. Mm, that's good. That's our Romans 10, 16. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. 15 going into 16. Uh, Romans 10, 15 and 16. Yes, sir. Um, so our feet are blessed. Our feet are beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, our feet are, are, are designed to always be positioned to carry out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, we gave an example uh, as it related to customs and manners of the Old Testament or even in biblical times, what was significant about the feet, if anybody remembers from last week? When you go into the home of someone, there was a water basin there, and you were, they, the, the house yes. owner would wash the guests' feet okay. because they were needing to clean them because what you bring, where you've been, you carry it with you. That's, that's the point we're the trying dust. to make. The <laughs> dust that I walk on. Okay, and that's why he says the feet to be shod always prepared means my feet always have to be clean. I can't allow the dust of life, if you will, to uh, be that which I carry with me when I'm going to preach the gospel. Because then I'm always going to preach my feeling and my emotion mm -hmm. in opposed to what God is saying. Mm -hmm. yes, so if I'm not keeping my feet clean, if my feet don't remain beautiful, I'm going to carry me into God's presence. Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 Uh, Okay, I'm just trying to recap so I can get where we want to go here. <laughs> All right, uh, then we're taking the shield. We're taking the shield of faith. Mm -hmm. And, and, and when, what, what did we say about the shield of faith? Well, the word of God says that the shield of faith is to quench the fiery dark. Yeah. Yeah, that would um, come into our area or attack our body. That's, that's the that's one right. I need to hear. That, 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 that first part you said, my area. Yes, sir. The shield is designed to protect my area, protect my space. My I've got a breastplate on that covers my body. Mm -hmm. But I need a shield on to protect my space. Even Jesus Christ himself with his 12 disciples. He had an inner circle of the 12. There were only three that he would bring into his immediate or his intimate space. Peter, James, and John. The other nine, they were saved. They were disciples. They were, you know, good men. But they weren't on the same level as the inner three. There has to be portions of your life that you ought to shield people from. Mm. Mm. Teach it. Okay. Uh, uh, some people aren't even worthy, Deacon is black, to get close enough to the anointing on your life mm. because they're not with, they don't have the same intent. Let, let, let me give you this. This, this is a biblical example. Uh, when Jesus went to the Mount Transfiguration yes, in, in Matthew chapter 17, um, he knew what he was going to experience on that mount was too much for Bartholomew to handle. 
So even though Bartholomew was one of the disciples, Jesus says, you got to stay here because where I'm going, you're not prepared to handle. Mm -hmm. There are some people that can be connected to you, but can't be intimate with you. Mm -hmm. Help us. Amen. Help us, sir. Yeah, there's there some folk that it's cool to go to the cookout with them, but, but, but they might not be ready to go to this next level that I'm going to in God. Amen. You know, I still love them. They still my family. They still my people. But for where I'm going, no, nah, you, you, you ain't ready. Because see, you'll get out there and get us all kicked out. Because you're not ready for this next level that I'm going to. So the shield is designed not only to quench the, darts of the, the fiery darts of the wicked one, but it's also designed to protect my space. Okay? Uh, the helmet of salvation. We've done a great job of recapping. We're almost there. The helmet of salvation. What did we say was significant about the helmet of salvation? Keep your thoughts in line. Keep my thoughts in line. Excellent, first lady. Listen, it wraps your mind around that you salvation, um, that you have the assurance that you're, you have salvation. That's it. That's it. It is an assurance. The helmet of salvation means my mind is closed, brother Dave, that every time I wake up in the morning, even if I, quote, unquote, don't feel saved, mm -hmm. I am saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Help us. Even if I had a rough night, you know, even if I had a rough day, when my salvation, when my salvation has been sure, and it, it is, you know, it's the real deal. I didn't just go on an emotion, but I really had a, an interaction and a connection with Jesus Christ. When that salvation experience takes place, bro, Foster, nobody can take that from me. Amen. This is the great part. I can't take that from myself. Mm -hmm. So, preacher, are you telling me once saved, always say, that's not what I'm teaching you. That's not what I'm teaching you. That's not what I'm teaching you. What I'm teaching you is this. When one has come into a true experience with Jesus Christ, you have truly acknowledged that in your heart, I, I was a sinner. I, I was wrong. I did a lot of dirt. I did a lot of junk. I've acknowledged that, Jesus, I'm accepting who you are in my life. When that truly happens, my attitude towards him changes. Mm -hmm. So while my attitude towards him changes, there's still a process that my actions have to change. Yes, sir. If I came to Jesus and I was a smoker, all right, uh, I was smoking, smoking the pack the day. I came to Jesus and I said, you know, uh, God, I'm tired of who I was. You know, make me new, uh, change me. So He says, all right, uh, the preacher leads you. You know, confess, believe with your mouth, confess your heart, Lord Jesus. You know, I believe He did that. I believe that, and I'm gonna give Jesus a try. Well, when the, even though my heart just changed towards Him, uh, there's still a pack of cigarettes sitting on the passenger side of my car. So now my actions have to change to align with what my heart did. Mm -hmm. Y'all following me? Mm -hmm. My heart changed when I gave it to him. But now there's a process of my actions lining up with the change in my heart. Mm -hmm. So when I have a rough day, when I have a slip or a stumble, that doesn't mean that my confession wasn't real. That doesn't mean that my, uh, that, that my heart didn't change. That just means my actions are still getting better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this thing, Sister Foster, we can't live in our actions getting better. Mm -hmm. Teach him. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't get saved today and then 30 years from now my actions still getting better. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that, that wasn't a real thing. Let me give you some Greek. The word I've given you guys this before, some of the ones that's been with me for a while. Uh, in the Greek, the word salvation or confession means it's homologia. Mm -hmm. All right? Homologio is a compound Greek word. Okay? Homo and logos. All right? Or logos. Homo and logos. Okay, homo, as we know, is a, is a, is a, is a prefix, if you will, that has a, denotes the meaning of being the same. All right, the same. Homo. We hear homosexual. We know that people that, that that care for the same sex. All right. So homo means same. Logos, logio, a logos is the word. All right. So when you put the compound word together, homo logios, homo logos, it means my confession is that I'm the same as the word. Mm. Who is the word? Jesus Christ is the yes, word. Sir. So that means my confession is that my actions now ought to be the same as the word. If my actions are not the same as the word, then maybe my heart never really changed. Mm. Right wow. All right. Okay. So uh, that was just that was uh, that was a free one. That ain't gonna cost you nothing. Okay. Um, so <laughs> heaven salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. What is the interesting part as we conclude this recap? And then I'm gonna teach and then slow down and let you guys really consume it all. Um, the sword of the spirit. Please, somebody explain to me uh, what we showed last week was the significant portion of the sword of the spirit. Of our Lord. No, he said that. 
Hold on, hold on. Uh -oh. I, I, I want you to, I want you to say, say what you said. I said it's extension. Okay, guess how I want you to say that. It's extension. Okay, now you, you tell me what you said, Sister Foster. Instead of my loin. Uh, okay, all right. Now, e even though I, I, that's a great note, let me let me make it complete. Okay, that, that's great, right where you are. Now, the sword, all right, the sword, as First Lady just said, <laughs> is simply an extension of what was in my loins. Okay, when I'm when I'm not fighting, when I'm not fighting, my sword is in my holster. I gave the example of my cell phone. Right now, my cell phone is in my holster. All right, but it's connected to my belt. All right. Now, 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 we just said my belt earlier. My loins are girded about with truth. Mm -hmm. So that means that my sword, my cell phone, is an extension of my truth. So while it's up, it's the same as what my belt is. Yes, it's the word of God. He says, taking the sword of spirit. All I'm doing is taking what's already on me yes, and sir. extending it out. Wow. The sword of the spirit is the, simply an extension of what my loins are wrapped in. The truth that's my center has a, a sword on it. I pull my sword out when it's time to go to battle. So the sword of the spirit is simply an extension of my waist. So the sword comes out of truth. Okay? Yes, sir. The sword comes out of truth. So just like the sword, the, the, the word is the sword, the, the, the truth is the sword. Uh, we gave a couple of scriptures, John 17, 17, just to make sure it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It says, you know, I sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So his word is truth. Uh, and and, and um, there's so many. Psalm 119 uh, verse uh, 105. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, you know, um, uh, Isaiah 50, 55 and 11. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth and shall not return unto me void. You know, uh, it's so much as it relates to the word. Uh, it, uh, Hebrews 4 and 12. You know, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the body of the sun of soul and spirit of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So we find that his word, uh, Psalm 1, 119, 133, says, Order my steps in thy word, you know, and let not uh, let the uh, iniquity depart from me. So the scripture is, is clothed in giving us understanding that his word is likened unto a sword. Yes, sir. His word is that truth that we are encompassed in. So that's what we were last week. Excellent job of review. Let's pick up, all right, verse number 18. This is all new information, so everybody's on even playing field. So when I call on you, uh, I'm listening for your answers. All right, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 18. The word of the Lord says this. I'm, I'm going to read 18 and 19, then we're going to start doing some teaching. Okay, uh, 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. 19 says, and for me, pray for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Let's dig into these, these two verses tonight. Uh, and I'm really excited about it, and I'm just going to teach. There's going to be no preaching at all tonight. You want to hear me preach come Sunday. All right. Um, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Brother Foster, it is necessary for us to understand that there is a difference between prayer and supplication. There is a difference between prayer and supplication. Although supplication is wrapped up in prayer and prayer is wrapped up in supplication there is yet a distinct difference or else the scripture never would have gave us two different words it would have just said praying always with all prayer and prayer in the spirit but it says prayer and supplication let's get some understanding the word prayer the word prayer uh in our regular english definition according to Merriam webster is an entreaty and entreaty. Uh, it means to implore. Implore. Prayer is a general request made to God. Prayer. All that was English. The English definition. It's an entreaty to implore. It is a general request made to God. 
Now, let's be scholarly. Prayer in the Greek. Prayer in the Greek, uh, the word is prosyoke. Prosyoke is spelled P-R-O-S-E-U-C-H-O. Prosyoke. 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 The definition, very key, is also similar to uh, what the English definition is. It is simply a general offering made unto God. Prosyoke. Prosyoke. A general offering made unto God. Okay? That's prayer. Supplication, on the other hand, is to make a petition that carries a particular need or specific request. Supplication. A petition carries a particular need or a specific request. Supplication in its Greek form the definition holds true for English and Greek, but the Greek word is deasis. Deasis. And it's spelled, and it's got, you know, funny little things over the I's and the E's, but uh, it's D E E S I S. And there's a, uh, I don't know what it's called, the, the short line over the E, second E. Yeah, I'll look that up next week, tell you what the short line means. All right? Deasis. A petition. To make a, to address or have a specific need or particular need, um, it's dealing with things being specific. Now, if the scripture says, praying always with all general prayer or general offerings and specific requests or petitions in the spirit. Now, <laughs> I, I this is going to be heavy, so let me let me just let me start it like this, okay? In our in our uh, Bible, in our uh, Sunday school, uh, we're we're going through a book called First Principles, okay? Our uh, First Principles talks about and deals with uh, foundational truths throughout the Bible, okay? Uh, in in the particular chapter that we've been dealing with the last couple of weeks. Uh, is dealing with the Holy Spirit, okay? Uh, the Holy Spirit, which, uh, you know, it's, it's, you've got to be, um, you know, uh, you got to stick to the word as it relates to what the Holy Spirit is about, who he is, um, how he operates. Now, uh, when we see the word spirit with the capital S, as we see here in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, it is referring to, okay, the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, uh, who is our comforter. Okay, uh, the Bible teaches us in Romans 8 and 26, you know, that the Spirit, he helpeth our infirmities. Uh, so he talks to the Father uh, when we don't know what to say, when we don't know what to pray, he prays on our behalf. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Black, when I looked at this scripture, though, mm -hmm. the scripture says to make supplication, Deacon is Black, in the Spirit. Supplication is always a specific thing. Uh, so how can I be specific when I don't know what I'm saying? How can I be specific in praying according to the Spirit when it's only the Spirit that knows what he's saying to God? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, yeah I, I'm, I'm going to tell you. It was, it was a rhetorical type question. I'm, I'm going to give you the answer. Uh, that's why it's important to truly have him operable in your life. Because when I'm communicating with him, I'm specifically communicating with him about things I don't know what to say. Mm. Uh, okay, um, make, make it plain. Okay, uh, let's just say we went to, uh, we went to uh, uh, France right now, okay? We're in Paris. Yes. Uh, my wife first day to say yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, pray, pray for me. Pray, pray for me and me. Amen. For my pocketbook. Amen. Amen. So, um, um, if we're in France and we know that it is a specific place we want to get to, okay? What's in France that everybody wants to go see? Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower. All right, let's use the Eiffel Tower. All right? Now, uh, we know we came here to visit the Eiffel Tower. 
But we don't know how to communicate to anybody around us how to tell us where to go. So what we need is a what? Translator. We, oh, God, y'all with me. We need a translator. I know where I'm trying to go. Mm, that's good, sir. I know what I'm trying to say. I just don't know how to say it in your language. Mm. So the spirit comes along, my translator, and as I'm talking to God, based on if I got to draw pictures, I, I start doing leaning stuff. I start, you know, I start talking, you know, I start trying to draw something. Look, man, it look like this. Even though I can't say it, the translator understands what I'm saying, and he takes me where I want to go. Mm. So I've got to be specific, even when I don't know how to say it. Is anybody getting it tonight? Uh, so so the, the operation of the Holy Spirit, uh, Deacon is Black, is he makes my prayer so perfect that even when I don't know what I'm saying to him, he's saying, you're saying the right thing. So I've got to learn how in the spirit to make supplication. God, I know that, uh, you know, my mom needs healing. I, I, I know she needs healing, but I, I just don't know how to quite say it to you the way that's going to move you to heal her now. Uh, so, so let me go beyond what my words can do. Lord, let me draw a picture to the Holy Ghost and, and let the mm. Holy Ghost dissect this picture for you yes, and tell you what I'm trying to say. Yes, sir. And the Holy Spirit says, you did just enough. The minute you thought it, you did enough for me to take that to God. And this is the answer. Because you came to me specifically not even knowing how to say it. Mm. Mm. That's awesome. My goodness. So he says, when I'm praying, I shouldn't even waste my time trying to pray English to the Spirit. I only ought to come to him with supplication, with specific things. Don't, don't come to the Holy Ghost saying, thank you for waking me up this morning. You can tell God that, that's good. But the Holy Spirit says, I'm there for the specific request. <laughs> this might be preaching. Let me, let, me, let me move on. So he says, prayer, general request. And supplication in the spirit. When you want to pray, you know, you got your own private time. That's great. Talk to the Father. Here, here, you, you know, Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven. Give him all that. Give him and now lay me down to sleep. But when you're coming with something for real, you got to tap into someone, uh, Sister Lipscomb, that knows how to present to God what you're trying to say. All right. Um, then he says, not only do I have to pray with prayer and supplication in the spirit, but I also have to watch. This is, this is the heavy part. I have to watch with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So I've got to know how to make supplication in the spirit. I've got to be able to talk to the Holy Ghost uh, that he can get to God what I'm trying to say. But then i got to be able to also pray specifically for the saints. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting part, First Lady, is that Paul wasn't writing to himself as the pastor or the apostle. He was writing to the church. Mm -hmm. So uh, what he's saying is the operation of the gifts are not reserved for the spiritual leader, but it's there for the saints. Mm -hmm. So that if you can't get the pastor, your brother ought to be able to pray for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take it a step further. You ought to be able to pray for yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. Because the same power that the pastor's operating in you got access to. Amen. Same power, same God. So he says, when, when you're dealing with the saints, now he said, when you're talking to God, prayer and supplication is great. But when you're dealing with people, you got to persevere and offer supplication. Amen. Amen. Teach him, teach him, to, teach him tonight. Uh, uh, what, what's your name, my brother? Because I want to call you a few times. <laughs> Myron. Myron. Bro, bro, my, William. Uh, William. Oh, that, that's great, bro. I'll never forget that. Uh, one, of, one of my best guys at, at my last church, uh, name was Williams. Hey, Amen. I got him. Williamson. Williamson. All right. Well, Williamson. I still won't forget him. Here we go. Uh,